right, we are back, and uh, it's time for, drum roll please, a uh, lightning round. Another li- <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Way to go. Way to go, Ben, with the jamming tunes. Uh, It's lightning round. Y'all loved it the last time we did it, so we're doing it again. As a reminder, Kelly cuts me off. Do I get a minute? Roughly. Roughly, until Kelly gets tired of listening to me. And I have no idea. Zero. I've got no idea what these questions are, where they're coming from. Who's asking, Jenna or Kelly? Me. Okay, and they're about what? These are all about relationships. Thematically? Yes. Ugh. Are you going to ask me about what happens when a producer takes over a show and they're just mean? Are you going to ask me that question? No, I know how that relationship ends. Yeah, I don't know how to, I don't know how to handle that. I'm, I wouldn't be good. No, these are all pretty much about marital relationships, marital dating, that kind of thing. Okay. You got- That's all I'm giving you. <laughs> and I wish y'all could see. She's got a smile on her face because she knows she's going to lob grenades in here and I can't do anything about it. And I only get a minute and I talk too long anyway. Okay, let's do this. I'm ready. All right. Question one. What advice would you give to a young single male looking for a relationship? Make yourself the best version of you you can be. Quit trying to figure out, find other people to make you feel good about yourself. Go exercise. Go get a great job. Go get a couple of mentors. Go do big things. Go out swinging. Go join an MMA gym. Go do stuff. Go join a violin class or a guitar class or a salsa dancing or knitting class. I don't care what you do. Go make yourself the best version of you you can be so that when you run into somebody, they don't look at you as a project. They look at you as a, yes, please. Look at you. Wow. 30 seconds left. Nice. Really? Yeah. That's the first so proud of you. ever, ever. All right, next question. Is that a good answer? What do that you think about great. that? Actually, I think that was fantastic. Worry about you, not about getting in the relationship. I think that's a fantastic answer. Yes. All right, what do you do when one spouse is ready to have kids or adopt and the other isn't? <sighs> Leave them. Divorce, probably. <laughs> I'm just that's kidding. That's the only way. That's the only way. And that's the last time we do that. <laughs> no, don't do that. Okay, what's the question again? What do you do when one spouse is ready to leave or to have kids or adopt and the other one isn't? I think the decision to have kids or not have kids is one of the core challenges um, that all relationship, all marriage relationships face. And I think it's getting to the core of that um, underneath it. I'm put on earth to be a mom. I really want to be a dad. Um, my life isn't full without what is, what are you afraid of? I think getting to those things and really being very, very specific. What are the core fears? One of e- e- one of you who doesn't want to have kids, what are the core fears? What are the core pros? Like, here's what I really want to have children and getting to the core of that stuff. And then at some point, and it sounds awful, you got to negotiate. Let's get, I need six months and let's figure it out. All right. What are y'all doing back there? It's the timers. All right. How do you, the next question, how do you fight fair in relationships? Here's my rule for fighting. Um, You don't fight when you're mad. And you don't fight in the heat of. You have, I don't even, honestly, I'm going to be, I don't like the word fighting. Um, there's passionate disagreements. I just fighting. I fight when I'm trying to protect somebody. Um, I'm, I fight when it, with the intention of hurting somebody. And that's not how you engage in relationship disagreements. So my rule is I don't fight when I'm mad. I don't disagree when I'm mad. I walk away. I literally walk away. Sometimes it's for 30 minutes. Sometimes it's for 30 days. I'm not ready to have this conversation yet. I will come back and I'll be plugged in. Um, And then when I come back in, I'm very specific. I don't use words like, um, oh, I'm very I-centric. I feel I'm experiencing not you did. And it's all about here's what I'm bringing to the table. And then I ask my wife to bring that back. Is that fair? That's great. Okay. Awesome. You fight when you're mad. I am learning not to. Really? Yeah. Way to go. Because I'm, I'm, as my husband lovingly calls me, a bit of a bulldozer. <laughs> I've never experienced that. Yeah. And so I just I'm lied learning, to you, America. But he needs to walk away, and I usually am, you know, chase right after him. But I am learning to <laughs> let him walk away. We'll talk, think about it, and then come back. And it's always more productive. Okay. Can I ask you this question? Sure. I have heard it said that when somebody has the maturity to walk away, sometimes they say, this isn't a good conversation. That that in and of itself is like dumping gasoline on a fire. Like, oh, you're Mr. Mature, and it just makes it worse. It can be. Definitely, if 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 in my case where I'm like, oh, okay, well, you don't want to talk about this, you know, blah, blah. But it, 
to me, that was clear that I needed to do more work than on me because that person probably, and you know, later you're like, yeah, that was the mature yeah. choice. So it was, no, I need to back up. I'm willing to be wrong here. I don't, I, I just don't have an experience in my life where fighting with somebody I love solved anything. No, no, it, it doesn't. Because things you don't want to say come out and yeah, yeah, you know, accusations and this, that, and the other. So it never works. It never <laughs> accusations. works well. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. All right, cool. This is not from me. This is somebody else, but I'm just going to read the question. Sure. <laughs> Seriously. 100% from, tell me about your marriage, Kelly. No, this, my dad cheated on my mom multiple times and now I'm married. I'm afraid my husband will cheat on me. Can you chief, cheat proof a marriage? <sighs> Can you cheat proof a marriage? I don't know that that's the goal. Um, the goal is to love deeply. If you play a game to not lose, you're going to play timid. You're going to um, uh, you're going to be constricted. I want to play the game to win. So, um, number one, her body is going to to think he's going to cheat, and that's okay. What she's got to do is is be open about that and be honest about it, and say, "Hey, in this season, when I'm learning how to trust, and not just learning intellectually, but learning like my body, learning how to trust you." Um, here's what I need. And he's got to understand where she came from, where her, what the the world she comes from and say, okay, I love you enough that I'm going to, I'm going to go a little bit further than it makes sense. Even you can look at my texts. You can check out my Netflix account. I don't care. I'm a wide open book. I'm going to be a part of teaching her body that she's safe. And man, have a regular check-in, take care of yourselves, take care of each other and make it your life's mission to meet the other person's needs. And if they make it their life mission, man, it's really tough. You're done. To go find love somewhere else. You don't need to. All right. Near, near. <laughs> what was that sound? Oh, I got to tell you that near, near story is pretty funny. Okay. It's not for today, but it's awesome. How do you keep DIY home projects from taking over your marriage? Oh, geez. Don't ever do them. Don't do them. Just stop. You know how many unfinished projects are at my house? 158. They're everywhere. They're the worst. A, don't. Don't. B, if you're going to, have a clear budget, a clear, I'm starting this, I'm going to finish it when, a timeline, have enough people that can help you get this thing started and finish it. And you cannot start any new project until this one's finished, period. End of story. And this is the pot talking to the kettle. This is the single most hypocritical thing I've ever said on the show. Don't start anything until it's the other thing's finished. And if you're like, I, but I got to do this. Cool. Sucks to be you. You got to finish the other thing first. That's just the way that's got to be. And you can't pull up all the hardwood floors and then be like, I think I'm going to build a garden. And then get halfway through the garden and be like, you know what? I need a pool. And just start shoveling in the backyard. You can't do it. Can't do it. That may, may be my favorite thing you've ever said because you just discussed my husband. You just, yeah. If you haven't got this, by the way, America, this is just the Kelly asks questions about her, her marriage. <laughs> the amount of unfinished projects. <laughs> Anywho. Does he consider you an unfinished project? Probably. <laughs> He's working. He's working hard. I don't know if it's going anywhere, though. All right. So <laughs> how do you know when a relationship is worth fighting for? Um... You make the choice to keep fighting for it. Um, when two, when you you and the other person are both all in. If one person is partly in and the other person's all in, it's not going to work. Um, when you are doing things because you need this, you're codependent. Um, when somebody is an addict and they are trying to keep themselves alive over here with unhealthy behaviors and you're tagging along, it's not going to work. So... It's worth fighting for when both of you say, and not just say, but both do, I'm, I'm all in. I've got to learn new stuff and it's going to take a long time. I got to learn how to trust again. I got to learn how to fill in the blank. I got to learn how to handle money. I got to learn how to not lie. I got to learn how to not drink when I get upset or not overeat when I get upset. I got to learn new things, but I promise I'm all in if you are. Awesome. All right. Next question. How do you maintain intimacy when you have small kids at home? You don't. <laughs> you don't. If you have two kids, five and under, it's a sex-free zone for a long time. 
Just kidding. It's not. Um, here's how you, uh, number one, you have to do the seemingly unsexy thing, but it's absolutely not, is you have to plan intimacy. And intimacy, by the way, isn't just doing it. Intimacy is also, we're just, I, I want you to sit by me and hold me while we watch a show. I want to hold hands under the covers and fall asleep together while we're watching The Office. Um, intimacy is, I just want to sit on the front porch and have coffee together. Intimacy might be bananas wild sex with all your weird fantasy. That's fine. Let's figure this thing out. I'll get off the rails tonight. Like whatever that looks like. But you, here's the key. You got to be intentional about it. And you got to map it out. And you have to talk. And so guys, if you're like, I lost my wife. Shut up. You're fine. But speak out loud. And ladies, if, if women, if you're like, intimacy means something different to me in this season. Um, I don't like all these people pawing all over, whatever that. Great. Speak it out loud and then be very clear about what comes next awesome all right my husband has been hinting that he might like to go to therapy should i encourage him yes yes um i will tell you my wife has quote unquote encouraged me um there's been a couple of times in our 20-year marriage that she reached out to my friends and said john's not okay and these aren't just buddies that i work with these are guys that are um as close as brothers. Um, and so she's reached out to a few guys in my life um, over the years and they've reached out and said, Hey, you're not doing all right. Um, what do you, what do you, what actions are you going to take? And um, they've been strongly encouraging now, right now we're in, I'm in a season in my marriage with my wife. Actually, she told me the other day, I think you need to call that guy. And she's right. I need to call that guy. So um, now we're in a season where she just encourages me and I can hear it. There was seasons when I couldn't hear it. And if she had told me to go to counseling, I would have blown up and been like, you need to go to counseling. You're the crazy person. And so it just, yes, absolutely. You should encourage him, but encourage him in a way that he can hear it. Not in a way that makes you feel better or feel like I said, so that's not, that's not helpful. Awesome. Um, I am, I have not been invited or included by the wives of my husband's friend group. How do I handle that? I don't know. Are you weird? This is a question to you, Kelly, because I know you just asked that question. <laughs> um, here's how you handle it. Um, you got rejected or you're getting rejected. You're in the act of getting rejection. One of the hardest things for married couples, especially newly married couples, is the expectation that you're just going to be friends with their friend's spouse. And that works for a season, for a short season. Occasionally, you get to be pretty tight. But most of the time, you have to, over time, develop couple friends, new people that you hang out with and do life with. So if you realize that your husband has some guy friends and their wives are all buddy-buddy and they don't like you, that stinks. It hurts. It's a knife in your soul. And more importantly, it's a knife in the picture of we're just going to keep this party going. We are in college together and then we all get married and now we're going to have kids together. We're all going to play Little League together. They're not. I know I'm still talking. They're not going to do that. You're going to have to create new um, community, new friends. So you're going to have to be honest with your husband and he's going to be like, no, it's not true. I don't, they like you. They just, uh, you have to be honest about it and you've got to do the hard work of finding other couple friends and going out with them. And that stinks. And it's not fun. It's the worst thing in the world is being an adult making friends, especially couple friends. God help us. But they are out there and it's awesome. Just take some work. Can I add to that? Of course. Um, also, because I have my group of girlfriends and then most of the husbands are friends as well because we all met working in the same industry. And my husband is not a very social person. He's more of an introvert. And so he has expressed that same thing at times. And I said, well, the first few times they asked you to do anything, you didn't. Mm -hmm. So they quit asking. So at some point, you may have to reach out and say, hey, you want to go grab coffee? Or yes. So you may have to reach out individually or with a couple of them also. And that's a good point. It may be instead of doing like a couple's thing, you reach out and ask those wives, hey, let's all go out. Yeah. And I got three tickets to the, thing, the XYZ. Um, let's all go. And you just foot the bill. Let's all take, let's take them out. Let's go do this. But that's a great idea. All right, last one. Hold on, you're smiling before you even ask this. I can see this. I don't know what's coming. I think this is a good question that a lot of couples have. And by a lot, you mean you and your husband. Go ahead. How many times a week should a couple have sex? Uh, 10, 11? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, you're welcome, gentlemen. You're welcome. 
Um, man, that, okay, so I get that question a lot. How often should a couple have sex? It, it's a couple different things. Number one, um, some people, the barometer for connectivity in their relationship is sex. That is That brings peace to their body physiologically. That grounds them. Um, for some people, it's recreation. For some people, it is, um, it's a way to unplug. And it's like watching Lord of the Rings. I can go be somebody else, do something else over here. We can become a different couple over here. Because over here, I wear a suit and I go to work and I'm a dork and I'm a mom, I'm a dad. Over here, I can whoo, get off the rails. So sex means different things to different people and there's different seasons. In some seasons, I'm writing a book and I'm really busy. In other seasons, man, things are just cooking. In other seasons, we have a two-year-old and a five-year-old and then I'm pregnant. So here's the thing. How many times should you have sex? As many times as both of you can honestly and fully um, commit to one another to doing it over the course of one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Um, I think kind of like weighing yourself uh, every day, it's not, it's not really a helpful metric over time. A trend is helpful. So if you get to the end of a week and you're like, we only did it once this week, we're falling apart. You're not. If you get to the end of three months and we've had sex two or three times and man, I really am missing my wife or I'm really missing my husband. What's going on? That is a trend, right? Let's have that conversation. But, um, I think it's what both people agree on. It's just that, Kelly, most people agree on it. They lie to each other. I'm cool. I'm fine. Or, no, no, it's good. Be honest about your needs and figure it out that way. Is that, does that sound fair? Yeah, I think that's great. Okay. Because I don't think there's a, there's not a numerical answer. It's there's different not. for everybody. Every and couple. I actually, um, there is like a statistically, most couples have sex this often. I'm actually, don't give that out. Because I, every couple's different and every couple has diff, is in a different season. The same as people are like, what, um, what, what foods should you eat? Man, that's a, that's a, depends on what your goals are and what you're doing. It, it, it's got so many factors to it. So similar to that question. The key is be honest and intentional about it. There we go. You survived it. That was nice it. Work. That was it. I nice like job. those. Those are fun. Thanks for setting that up. Thanks for doing it. 